It was a day of snow geeks in paradise. We went out with a couple of graduate students from the University of Utah Department of Meteorology, Wendy Wagner, who's also an ex-Olympic cross-country skier, and Matt Jelgum. We took off and went up into the Park City Ridgeline, breaking trail through pretty deep snow. Along the way, noticed an uh, interesting thing, icicles, icicles on, on the trees tree with new snow on new top snow. of that. So what here's a quiz. That mean? it means it was warm and sunny yesterday, creating the icicles, and then we got new snow this morning. Approaching a wind-loaded slope, the wind is blowing from left to right, so that's why Wendy is choosing the route on the left side of that obstacle. Here I am jumping on a small little test slope. This is a safe little spot and just to uh, see what the north facing slopes are like, to see if they react, see if the wind loading is affecting them, poke around a little bit. I seldom pass up little test slopes like that. I think they're very, very valuable. Okay. Up along the ridges, the wind, of course, is howling along. That's the main hazard for the day, the wind. Wind is eroding from the upwind sides of ridges and depositing on the downwind sides. And uh, so we wanted to test some of that. We worked our way down a very shallow angled slope into the monitor bowls and could look back at some of the recent cornice falls coming up and some skiers had uh, skied the slope probably earlier in the morning, I would guess. Uh, windy coming on down. It was uh, quite good, but of course, you know, I am working and uh, for me, yeah. skiing and boarding is just transportation to get from one snow pit to the other. So I, I don't enjoy such things, but some people do. Speaking of snow pits, uh, we dug on in and here's Matt and Wendy doing an extended column test. You put the probe in, and then you take a cord, and uh, this one's a cable in this case, and cutting it. You can do this with one person, but they're doing it with two. It runs around the probe, and you cut it 30 centimeters, uh, 30 centimeters in one direction and 90 centimeters in the other. Cut it down to the ground. You can do it very quickly. And then after you've cut it, then you start tapping on it harder and harder, first from your wrist, then from your elbow, and then using your whole arm. You're trying to get a propagation within the column. So to make an avalanche, you have to both initiate and propagate a slide. If you've got to pound on it this hard and not get an avalanche, then uh, you're not going to get an avalanche that day if you're not going to get a propagation. And of course, being true snow geeks, we have to get out the crystal card, look with the microscope, and see what kind of crystals are buried within the snow. In this case, it was quite a stable snowpack. Really not too much interesting, no faceted snow. Most of this is pretty well bonded, sintered snow. And so, not too interesting for an avalanche geek like me. But uh, nonetheless, we still get out and look at things. Interestingly enough, Wendy is studying snow surface temperature for her thesis uh, for the Olympics in Whistler uh, to predict snow surface temperature using computer models and other methods uh, for the cross-country ski course. And she's measuring the snow temperature with the emissivity gauge, so it measures the amount of the, the snow surface temperature um, with using infrared radiation. And in this case, she's not really finding very much temperature gradient. It's about uh, minus 12 up at the top of the snowpack and zero degrees on the ground, but a pretty even temperature gradient throughout the two meters, so it's really not a critical temperature gradient. And then, of course, uh, we wanted to stomp on some cornices to test the, uh, the wind loading. Here I am. Um, the first rule of jumping on cornices uses a belay rope. Also, make sure nobody's below you. Third is start farther back than you think you need to, just in case you've misjudged the cornice. Look from the side, have somebody uh, spot you from the side so you can know how far you can go out on the cornice. This is a fairly small cornice, but it's all we had uh, in this case, and it wasn't really triggering much um, avalanche, hardly anything as far as slabs underneath. So um, then we headed on back home. The wind loading still continuing blowing snow on downwind terrain, so that's the main hazard that we'll have to worry about tomorrow and, of course, today. So, great day for snow geeks.